Good morning, welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. We're back from Antigua and the water is below the wharf. That's nice because it was way up there. So there's a long list of things, but we're trying to get the sails done and uh, some engine work done so we can get on down the river a bit. Yeah, some people keep a to-do list. I just keep stuff piled up on the table here. This tells me I gotta pump the oil out of the engine to replace it and pull off the power steering pump because uh, that's what leaked all the hydraulic fluid into the engine. Well, I've never used one of these before, but it sure is gonna make it convenient. I can get a catch pan way down underneath there, but that's not convenient. Uh, all we gotta do apparently is uh, get the engine up to 40 degrees Celsius, a little over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. That won't be hard to do. And I'm gonna change this again so that I have some pitch on the blade So we just take out the dipstick and run this hose down that. How about that? Hook it up to some 12 volts. Put the discharge line into our five gallon bucket and uh, hit the switch back here. There we go. Black gold, Texas T. I'd say they need to put a longer suction hose on. Took a little over 20 minutes, so I think it's done. That should be about two and a half, three gallons. Ooh, that thing's hot too. Well, it's okay, I guess. So we're gonna rotate the drive shaft four turns so that'll push that thread out and repitch the blade so it has some bite into the water. So last time I messed with this, I took nine turns out of it and that made the blade just flat so it can pitch to zero. But with zero pitch, if you lose your power steering pump, you can't move the boat, so I'm gonna put four back into it so it has some bite even if we lose the power steering pump or a hose or something like that. I'm gonna let Dustin do the work here. That's one and a half, two, that's three. So we've discovered that the uh, bolts have loosened up from that drive shaft coupler. And this is the second time they've done that, so we're taking some precautions. It's always a good idea to go around with a wrench and just turn on stuff to make sure they're still tight. And those were not. So we got some lock washers and some thread locker and clean them up and make them stick this time. Well, we got never sees in there now, so we need a carburetor cleaner to dissolve that out. And then we'll use some thread locker in there. What do they call these things? Toothed washers. Yeah. And so we're going to try the any. You got an any and an Audi, and then we got their over lock washers. I really don't like lock washers, but these things seem to do pretty good. Thread locker to help back that up. Then we'll come back and we'll check it again just to make sure. We'll go down the river a little bit. Okay. This pump is turning out to be rather handy. We've got to get all the oil out of the. Uh, variable pitch control unit there because we're going to change over from power steering fluid or ATF or what we put in there last time to motor oil so if that pump springs a leak again and puts this oil into the engine it just puts in motor oil. What do you think Ginger? It's about yeah. I don't know if I'm looking. We'll change this filter out here too. I'm not curious so we open it up and look inside. It's got a fan, got a drive shaft going into it. It must have any colors in there, probably just rotary. Uh, it's also sucking air, so I put a piece of tape over it, and that didn't seem to help anymore. It's still sucking air in somewhere. Well, we got a nice weather day, so we're back to working on the mast. That means it's going to get a VHF antenna ready to go up there. Let's see. Yeah, they mean for that. Put that over that. And Aaron Armstrong is back with us, and he's making this well, just look way too freaking easy. Technically, my first visit. Technically, your first visit? How's that? Oh, I wasn't. Oh, that's right. You weren't legal on the first visit. All right, say so, yes. Yeah, so you've never been here before. That's right. Yeah, you were not in the army. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> Look at me, mother. I'm going to make him put a safety on. A little entertainment going up the river. I wonder how many gallons per hour he's burning. What were your rules? Uh, get the job done. Have fun. Something about safety. You'll probably have to take one of those straps off and then just loosen the other okay, one. Yeah, I'm going to take the bottom one and then try to pinch it. That's a great idea. So the first job is loosen up the straps on that gen pole and then he's going to slide that gen pole all the way to the top so we get as much clearance as we can to bring up the next piece. And besides being a uh, acrobatic and a climber, uh, Aaron, up there, Aaron up there is a uh, psychologist. 
bleeding a little. Yeah, where are you bleeding from? Fingers? Yeah. Okay. Well, the it's boat... a little extra lubrication for Yeah, this. the boat likes a little blood. You, this is why we should have our tail still. What? That evolutionary thing where we lost the tail, that was a terrible thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right now you could have just wrapped it around there and pulled up. Rock climbing is an excellent hobby. Much better than sitting around and watching videos. Get out there. I'm just trying to get the tie in as close as possible to the flange. Oh, good idea. So now he's going to take that halyard line and uh, use the messenger line that's on the gin pole and pull the uh, halyard up over that she at the top. Yeah, no, you ain't going to get that to go through there. No way in hell. That's what I just asked you. Well, I, didn't, I thought you were talking about a big old knot in the uh, messenger. You can put a knot in the messenger, you're not going to put a knot in that hatter and get it to go through. Yeah, that would work. Maybe. I'd put it right on the tip. Don't you always love it when people are not doing the work or giving you all this advice? Well, it's so easy. Just tie it on. I thought it was out of the army now. <laughs> I went it again, and now it's like... I can't get it off. Okay, then I'm just gonna go send it. <laughs> like in trying to undo my knot, it actually became. Oh, that's tight. beautiful. Yeah, looks very professional. Well, at least your camera can't zoom up here enough to judge. But... You wouldn't believe how zoomed I am. I see that rat's nest on the end of that line. <laughs> well, I think it's gonna work. Look at that. <laughs> see. I could get it off. I don't Who said it had to be pretty? You don't have to get it off. You just got to send it down. I got a knife. Look, he, you did bleed on my boat. <laughs> Right it's fine. Though. Oh my god. You're gonna have to wash the decks. A little scratch it did that. This, this thing right here? Does it hurt when I do that? Not at all. Oh, really? <laughs> Where yeah. do you want that? Look at this. He does this all backwards for me. He puts the leg loops down there on the cinch or the gree gree. And his seat is tied in. What do you call this thing again? What's this thing called? I think it's a daisy chain. A, yeah, daisy, a daisy chain. chain. Yeah. The daisy chain gives him the length between. The harness okay, me, I'll clip your and the uh, oh. uh, whatever this thing is up here. It's a rope Man 2. Rope Man 2, yeah. Oh, is it? It's a Rope Man 1, not a 2. I stand corrected. All right, like it's going to matter. Okay, right hip pocket is the bolt. My, my point is there's not a way of doing this. There's multiple ways of doing this. Find the one that works for you that you're comfortable with. He's comfortable with this. I, I wouldn't do it like that. <laughs> with the motor on it. What? You don't like the motor? I just... You'll get above the motor. Rise above it. Rise above it. Nicely done. Holy crap, I'm gonna... What you need, Doug? Right. I'm gonna get somewhere where I can tie the thing off. Is, it a, is the tension all right? There's a lot of flex. Yeah, it's bending the shit out of that. Okay, we need to come down and look at it again. Uh, I need to go to the other side. It may help if you pull from that direction. Okay, let me if try that. Both of the tension are pulling it that way. All right. Oh, a little That's slack on there. Okay, there we go. Putting the load on. Much better. Copy. Yeah, it's just good. Okay. Okay, going up. I'm using my head. <laughs> not, not the way my mom told me. Okay, ready to work for more? Yeah. Yeah. 
Watch your fingers. Coming up. Okay, we're over. We're over? Yeah. Um, you come down. Coming down? Easy down. We didn't think about. What? Was this crane is in the way. All right. Uh, I think it's close enough where I can probably get some of the bolts. If you can get one bolt in, yeah. you can pivot it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a little more slack or, or release. All right, slacking. Perfect. Holding. Let's go! And let her on. Woohoo! It's on? Nice. One bolt, one nut. To rule them all. Yeah, bye. <laughs> now, I think I can, I can uh, loosen and move to. As long as you don't have much slack in that bolt, yeah, I think you can too. Yeah, there, yeah there's, it's finger tight, so that thing is not coming off. Good. Okay. So you, can, you should be able to relax all your tension now. All right, coming off. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need but two bolts up there. But... College, just fill all the holes you can. There you go. He makes it look so damn easy. You can do it. Little spider monkey. Right. No tension on that. I don't think we have to move it up. I think it'll get the masthead in there without it. Yeah, it looks like it might have enough clearance. Dustin, you want to go ahead and tie the masthead on there for you? Sure. Uh, what am I tying it to? The, uh, the main halyard? Yeah. Okay. Scratching my paint. There you go. Holding. There you go, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which pie's marked aft? Right there? <laughs> Shit. Aaron, I'm worried about your time up there and how tired you are. This is not a doable position because there's zero bolt holes that line up. All right, then I think we gotta go back to where we were. Yeah. If All you're right. if you're able to do that. And I think that initial position was when you fabricated it because all even just it, loosely fitting it, all the bolt holes look perfect. Right. Okay. Yeah, go back to that position. Okay, that's out. Right. Yeah. So that puts the mainsail. Yeah, a little bit behind the mast. Well, you know, we're not really doing what we're doing anyway, so it's we'll okay see. Though. It may work out better, who knows? So the masthead is on now, and what he's doing is feeding the uh, halyard through the sheaves up there. So the last thing to do is remove the jib crane now and lower it back down on that halyard. All right, you can lower. We'll give him a laser rangefinder so he can measure the height of the mast just so we can confirm. You can see it on the mast. Yeah, I'm trying to hit it to not hit the... Uh, uh, there it is. Okay, we'll call that 4311. I kind of get the feeling you just came down before I thought of something else you could do. <laughs> 52 feet, 11 inches. Just call it 53 feet off the water to the top of that. Which means we can leave it up as long as the river doesn't come up any higher. <laughs> <laughs> so 52 is the lowest bridge at the 2% flow, which is high. So we should be able to clear everything even with the rig up. Yes, mother, I'm adding a safety non-skid strip here. Somebody suggested it for the rails up there, and I said, okay, send me something. <laughs> they did. I'm not going to use it up there, though. I'm going to use it on this platform because I nearly broke my neck on this the other day. Back then, this deck was down below the wharf, and I jumped in, and I slipped, and oh, man. So, Dave, thank you very much for the non-skid. It's going to go where it's needed. And if it holds up well, then maybe we'll put some of it on top of these pipes because... It'll help us walk down them, too. Yeah, I think that's going to work. It's 
getting some tension, so. Oh, I see what you did. That's what I think. Yeah, that'll work for a trial. Well, I'm almost there. Monkey man, he's already at the top. All right. Some more to go. Feet go up. Doug. Yeah. Behind you. Howdy. <laughs> what you need? That coax cable there on the deck. Roger that. Yeah. Did that tubing work? Yeah, All right, cool. And Aaron is up the mass his turn now. Still got a little rain, but the thunder has stopped. So he's got to get the wiring done to the lights, and that spreader bar has to be attached still. Okay. He's added some nylocks to the bolts on that flange there. I typically don't like nylocks, but in this case, yeah, we're going to add them on there. Here's the tricky maneuver. <laughs> you got to get your foot up on that flange. Yeah, he's got it. But he's got that very comfy. You like that? It's made for when people were skinny. <laughs> well, I can get my butt in it. You certainly can get yours. Now, it's impossible to read from here, but that tractor seat says Oklahoma on it. Well, Thunder's rolling back in, so he's coming down, but he's got it all done, all wired in, got all the lights, and you can see we're a little twisted on the mass, but the mass isn't welded in yet, so possibly we can rotate it. See, I'm looking straight down the bow of the boat, and you can see about 10, 10 degrees out. It's gonna take a lot of force, but I think we can rotate the mast. I think I have a leaky motor up here, hydraulic motor, so we're gonna give it a test. Power on. Do I see fluid leaking there? I don't. Maybe it needs pressure. We'll close that valve up there and we'll give it full pressure. So it's used to running on low pressure right now. He closes that, the pressure will come up to a thousand. One right in the middle, right, left hand, yep. Close it slowly. All the way, please. seal in there for sure. All right, thank you. Open that valve up. That takes the pressure off the system. Turn her off. Go we'll shut down the pump. Okay, so a new, maybe I can change the seal on that. I don't know. Uh, the cleanup crew is here this morning. The big old dead and water moccasin over there. I think they're waiting for it to get ripe enough. Hey, Harold, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to wait for something to die. Oh, can we go out and kill something? So what we're going to do is we're taking the belt off so we can replace these tensioners in here. One of them is squeaking and I might as well replace them all. Yeah, i got to get all the belts off. There we go. And a new spline belt is on its way. Okay. Yeah, there's black dust in here from this belt falling apart. Well, I'm glad I didn't put this engine any closer to the bulkhead here. It's just the right amount of room. No more. <laughs> you know, that looks a bit like a pump. Oh hell, that is the water pump. And you know, I probably ought to just replace the water pump anyway. Because that could be making the noise. I thought this up here was the pump. This is just, this is the idler. Yep, sure enough, that's the water pump. Isn't that amazing what we have at our fingertips now? Never fail to appreciate the stuff you got. Now the bad thing about pumping the oil out through the dipstick is it's not the lowest part of the engine pan. The lowest part of the engine pan is back that direction. So I'm taking some oil out the side plug, then I'll go down and get the bottom plug. Then I'll get me a 90 degree fitting that comes out of there and a hose that runs up. Make it easy next time. Well there's the drain plug. I need to turn it into a piece of 90 degree pipe fitting. 
and uh, there is still a gallon of oil down there but still you know without the little pump there'd been a lot more oil down there well it has been a long day of part shopping in the rain I've been all over Tulsa collecting oh, filters and belts and pumps and such and ordering more offline so we're getting there and it's the rain that we have to worry about now it's raining again and this is my surveillance cameras and that's uh, about four hours before this and the water is still going to come up another three feet and it's not so much the height of the river it's the speed of the current in the river because let me show you what it did to a couple of barges see part of the problem is all the trees and debris that come down the river too we don't want any of that getting into a propeller blade because that would really mess us up but then the other thing is you don't want to hit a dam either these barges are a good example of what steel does against concrete it loses the battle quickly so if you want to see the rest of this video it's a weber falls barge accident it wasn't any accident it was just badly done is what it was so we'll be putting together the sails and the engine still and waiting for the river to get into its banks and down because we don't want to go down and learn to steer on the river with it doing that at the next stop is just 50 miles on down at kerr reservoir we'll learn to sail there but uh let me let me leave you with this this is a little thing that bilge rats put together enjoy there once was a ship that put to sea the name of the ship was the sv seeker the winds blew up or bow dip down oh blow my bully boys blow oh. soon may the weathermen come to bring us solar and wind and sun one day when the flooding is done we'll take our leave and go the skipper was away on leave when out of the west the storm clouds seethed. The crew stepped in and took control, just like they'd learned to do. Huh! Soon may the weathermen come to bring us solar and wind and sun. One day when the flooding is done, we'll take our leave and go. The rain came down, the ship rose high, her lines were stretched and pulled her tight. All hands on deck to cut the lines before she said bye-bye. Huh. Soon may the weathermen come to bring us solar and wind and sun. One day when the flooding is done, we'll take our leave and go. No lines were cut, the boat was freed, the crew was a very special breed, and they belonged to the Seeker's Creed, and kept the boat afloat, huh? Soon may the weathermen come to bring us solar and wind and sun, one day when the flooding is done, we'll take our leave and go. Several weeks or even more, the line went slack then tight once more. This time round they knew what for and kept her riding so. Huh. Soon may the weathermen come to bring us solar and wind and sun. One day when the flooding is done, we'll take our leave and go. One day when the seasons change, her course will soon be rearranged. She heads back down the waterways amongst the river flow. Huh. Soon may the weathermen come to bring us solar and wind and sun. One day when the flooding is done, we'll take our leave and go. There'll be more stops along the way, another crew, another day. We'll be right here to have our say, the bilge rats won't jump ship. Huh. Soon may the weathermen come to bring us solar and wind and sun. One day when the flooding is done, we'll take our leave and go.